good morning everybody it is oh you can't even see oh, good morning everybody it is 6 a.m i got a little bit of sleep but <sighs> these things were fucking cold there's still blocks of ice damn it <sighs> okay we're gonna start the car and pray to god it doesn't fucking spin a bearing that doesn't sound good I'm pretty sure that sound is just my power steering though. The engine sounds like it didn't spin a bearing, so we're just gonna let that warm up. My fucking glasses are foggy. God, so freaking cold. Luckily, my heated blanket and my heated pads are keeping me warm. Last night, I was able to stay warm. The rest of everything else in my car wasn't. I think we have 20 hours of driving left before we get there. I wanted to make pancakes for breakfast, but I guess I forgot to keep my water warm. This idea sounded a lot more fun when I was sitting in a nice warm desert. I just checked, it is negative 24 degrees outside. I think that my car is more or less up to temperature now. Let's get this defrosting. Holy shit, this is all just frost on the inside of my car. Rip. Hey, they're not completely frozen solid though. Some of them are. It looks like some of them were in warmer spots than other ones. Okay, just one of them. Just the one that was touching my thigh. These ones are still frozen, but it looks like we have some chili mac that we can eat. No, I woke up like twice last night. I woke up at uh, 10 p.m. and then I woke up at like 1 a.m. to start my engine and get it going, just to make sure that it wouldn't get like so cold. <sighs> I'm not sure if that helped or not. Okay, hey, it looks like our front windshield is clear. Oh, fuck, okay, let's go then. Oh, I don't want to get out of the car. It's gonna be so fucking cold. So I have cell data right now. I should download the entire route to get there. I didn't download it yet because I'm not sure how long I'm gonna be without cell data after this. Yep, uh, 22 hours to drive, start. You guys like calling this car Red Beans or Beans 2.0. This car is still fucking running. Beans would not have been. I'm gonna put the water here inside my bedding. Uh, I turned the heat off, but it's still warm because my body was there and the air from this is gonna come in, so. <sighs> Let's fucking go. It is currently dark outside and driving in the dark doesn't sound very fun, but being cold doesn't sound fun either. God, I'm just thinking about how hard this would be if I was trying to do this in a Tesla or an electric car because, oh my God, having the engine make heat is so helpful. Holy shit, I found a city. That means we'll get real gas. Okay, uh, we're gonna get gas. We don't actually need gas, but fucking paying mountain gas prices is ridiculous to me. Oh my god, we might be able to get breakfast. Uh, I thought we were in the mountains for the next 20 hours with like no fucking civilization. I see a Tim Hortons, that means we can get breakfast and Wi-Fi, we can upload a video. Fuck yes. Okay. Okay, we will do Tim Hortons first. I hope their lobby is open right now. What this means is that we could have slept inside of a fucking better parking lot if I would have just driven an extra 15 miles last night. Oh my God, the lobby is open and it's warm. Oh. And they've got outlets. Okay, we are set. I get that classic bacon, B-E-L-T, and an orange juice. Roughly $7 for breakfast. I actually love these things, the bacon, lettuce, tomato things that Tim Horton sells. I just take the lettuce off, but they are just really good. My laptop powered off, it was so cold. I guess I forgot, this is one of the things I forgot to put in my bag with me, my sleeping bag. The internet here is surprisingly fast too. I thought we would get like one or two down just because we're in the mountains, but no. I take that back. Oh, also, I'm looking at this right now. I'm American, so I can stay in Canada for up to six months. I don't need to worry about two days, whatever you guys were talking about. It is 11 a.m. right now. We've been here for like three and a half hours. The upload speeds here are not great. 
One thing I absolutely want to get while we're here in town is an extension cable so I can take advantage of those heater block outlets that you see on the side of the parking lots. Yeah, it was dark when we got here. <clears throat> yeah, my power steering pump is not happy. <laughs> the people across the street are able to hear it. <laughs> Once it warms up, it'll be fine. Stop whining. You'll be okay. God damn it. Uh, I've got three quarters of a tank full, so I don't need to fill up. But I looked on the map and it looks like there's not a lot of gas stations on our route. So we're going to get gas while we have the opportunity to. I'm not certain, but it's possible that this little gas station will have an extension cable. Shut up. It's possible that this gas station will have an extension cable for us. They do have drinks, though that aren't, you know, a block of ice. So I don't typically drink water, but this is one drink that I absolutely love. It's vitamin water, it's lemon flavored, love it. <laughs> oh my God, do you remember that guy on the mountain yesterday saying, that, oh, the gas is so much more expensive. This is literally 25% cheaper than the gas at the other place, but I filled up my tank because it's so much more, God damn it. Ah. He's like, oh, it's so much more expensive the further north you go. No. And I get much better quality gasoline. Look at this, 94 octane. I knew that the mountain gas would be more expensive. God damn it. And that one? Yep, yep. First you do that click, and yep. that, and then, and then. Nope, it still says wrong grade selected. God damn, my fucking fingers. Yeah, and on the screen it still yeah. says you, wrong. Okay. Oh my god, it's too fucking cold for this. Select grid. Please select grid. Yes. I fucking lose my shit. Fingers are gonna fall off. Pump number two is frozen. Um, uh, pump four? No, that was you have to come. He says that pump number one will work, but it's attached to the same pump as pump number two, so I'm skeptical. <sighs> I'm in a bad mood, and I should not be letting that affect my fucking... I need a... I would say I need to cool off, but that's the problem. I can say, though, that this is a first. I've never had a gas pump freeze on me before. Just touching that metal makes my fingers burn. Wrong grade selected. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, so I got a refund. We're just canceling this whole fucking thing. I prepaid in the cash register with my Android Pay, so he couldn't give me like a refund very easily. I prepaid when I bought the drinks. Never prepay for gas, I guess. That's the lesson. God. Bad mood. Bad mood, bad mood. There's probably another gas station here somewhere. Petro Canada. Oh, looks like they've got one of their pumps that is out of service too. And I want to point out, this one is just as cheap as the last one. We're not prepaying for shit. We got an extra 20 liters of gas. I think that's an extra like 200 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles. I do still want to find a extension cable. Every time I fill up the gas, it has trouble starting. Super consistently, that's interesting. I'm looking for a kind of store that would sell an extension cable. I see a lot of motels and I see a McDonald's. I don't know why we didn't go to the McDonald's. I, I didn't see it then, but looking for extension cables. I saw a sign that said that there was an auto parts store. I imagine an auto parts store would have an extension cable. Okay, scratch that. I found a place called Home Hardware. That definitely will have an extension cable. 
we don't need an expensive one we just need one that will let us take advantage of uh things like this okay i guess they've got the extension cable here for us but i don't need it right now but i want to be able to take advantage of all of those outlet places the canadians seem to have oh yeah so i just want to show you guys something interesting so these they're both 16 feet i guess this is 15 foot this is 16 feet these are the same thickness of wire look at this this cheap little one is the same thickness as this they're both 16 gauge this one just has like a thicker insulation so 12 31 perfect okay so technically this one does not have a grounding um so I need to do, I need to, I need to manipulate my cables a little bit to get this to work. This one doesn't have the three prong. This only has two, but it's, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. <sighs> um, actually, I'm not going to leave yet. Let me just make sure that this actually works the way that I think it does. That way, if it doesn't work, I can go back in the store and I can buy the thing for real. So yeah, the problem is that this has the three prong and then this has the two prong and it's got a little plastic piece right here to try to stop you from doing exactly what I want to do. Like you can't plug it in like that. So we're just going to pull this plastic piece off so we can do it. Now, of course, the way that we're going to do that is with our teeth. And it has been removed. And I would say that this might be a fire hazard, but I promise nothing is going to melt out there. This is <laughs> not going to be a problem. You know what? Fuck it. Let's test the whole system. We see that they've got an extension cord out there that we can use. Let's just go plug this in and test it. My battery already has like 80% capacity, so uh, we don't need to do this for very long and it'll charge really quickly. But I do want to test. So this end will come right here, plug it in right there, and then we'll just pull this end over here and plug it in. Okay, it is trying to charge the battery, but I'm pretty sure the battery is below freezing, so I'm not actually sure what it's going to do. It does work. This is this is bringing power to it. It's honestly not worth risking the battery. Uh, like I said before, you absolutely do not want to charge a lithium iron phosphate battery when it's below freezing. You will fuck it up. So I'm not going to risk it. I will risk lots of things, like not putting snow tires on. I won't risk that. We're going to drive around a bit, wait until the hot air from the car is able to warm it up, and then we'll charge it. If a cop stops me and asks for my documentation, that'll be fun. Get in there. Okay, cool. We are on the road back to Alaska. It's crazy. My engine was up to operating temperature when we went in to get the extension cable, and in the, like, maybe seven minutes it took to get there, my engine fucking dropped, I don't know, 100 degrees. The battery in my trunk back there, that's made out of the same chemistry as that one. So charging the battery in my trunk would be just as dangerous. The difference is that actually has heaters. You can see here, it's got the, the heating state on. That's got heaters in there. And before it ever lets energy go into the battery, it gets it up to operating temperature, which is like five degrees above freezing. When I was shopping for batteries, I did have the option to buy one for my trunk that didn't have the heaters, but I thought that I might be going on a trip like this. So I'm really glad I made sure I paid the extra money for one that can survive Alaska. Looking at the comments from yesterday's video, this road, the Alaskan Highway, apparently this was made by the US Army in World War II. And I'm curious if that means that like the United States actually sent troops out here to build the road, or if they just paid for Canadians to make it. I'm pretty sure it's the former because I know people in the Army and I don't think they know how to build a road. Of course, it would be super easy for me to just Google that, but I'm not going to because I have an army of people who are certainly gonna tell me the answer. The quality of the roads is getting a little bit worse. It's getting muddier and dirtier. Okay, it looks like we are coming down the mountain. I mentioned this a lot when I was on my bike, but going downhill is much sketchier than going uphill. Going uphill, you can control your speed a lot better. Just like clockwork, my check engine light came on again, and it's not related to the misfire. This one says EGRA flow insufficient detected. I have no idea what that means. I don't have cell data, so I can't look it up. We're just gonna hope it's not critical for the car. The code is P0401. I just cleared the code. I'm gonna pretend like I never saw it. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste gas on this. That lasted for like seven seconds. I was waiting here for like 10 minutes, but then as soon as I decided to turn my car off, then he lets me through. Yeah, they are doing construction. Holy 
shit, are you guys seeing that? That's a mountain. That's These are like hills, but that is a fucking mountain. According to the signs, it is apparently called Stone Mountain. And if you're not a native English speaker, that is what we call redundant. I guess I don't need to put my emergency brake on. It's pretty cold still. We're gonna get up on the snowbank. Gotta get a thumbnail for the video. Ah! I accidentally slipped. Oh. This is kind of shocking, but there is actually a stream running down there, which means there's like a lake or something. There is there is liquid water up on top of these peaks, which is astounding to me because it's fucking freezing. Run, 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 run. Oh. Oh. I'm glad they gave us that little offshoot so we could look at Stone Mountain together. Oh, well apparently that lake I just mentioned is over here and it's called Summit Lake. Okay, well apparently the top of the lake is frozen and it's got snow on it, but underneath it is still liquid and it's still flowing down the stream. Water is crazy. Like I would have assumed that if the top of the lake was frozen, that all of the tributary streams would be frozen too, but clearly that's not the case. It's kind of cool. There's pretty much nobody on the roads with me, so I basically get both lanes to myself. It makes it a lot more comfortable to try to take these turns. I am blown away by how pretty this is. The last time I felt like this was when I was on my bike riding through Albania. There's a mountain goat in the middle of the road. Hi, little guy. I'm glad I'm not driving at night. Fuck it, we're gonna pull off and look at this too. Apparently this is called Lake Macho or Lake Muncho. I passed the sign quickly, I couldn't read it. So for an entire lake to be here, that means that this probably has to thaw out sometime during the summer, right? This can't be frozen 24 seven. Oh my God, do you guys wanna go down there and walk on the lake? Absolutely, yes we do. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this rolling 24 seven because I'm pretty sure the chances of me slipping and falling are pretty high. I don't have like snowshoes or anything, so I don't have like a whole lot of grip. How many times do you get to walk on a fucking frozen lake? Are we sure that it's super frozen? It's past winter, it's, it's probably frozen. Probably. Okay. I should, I should do like testing things before I go step out onto it. Feels pretty sturdy. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm hearing things. I think that's the ice cracking. Ah. No, like you can actually hear the ice crack. You can fucking hear it cracking underneath your feet. I'm gonna get you guys close so you can hear it crack. I don't want it to be overshadowed by my feet. Holy shit, I do not want to fall in. Would I die? 
No, I've seen that TikTok where the guy falls in and then he like shows you how to get out. I would be okay. My car could probably keep me warm. Holy shit. Is this safe? Is this safe to be on? I don't know. I'm still hearing cracking sounds, so I'm gonna say no. At least if this were to give out, I'm gonna say no. I think this is probably a safer way to walk up this because there's no snow involved. Holy shit, I just walked a fucking frozen lake. I wanna go out farther onto the ice, but I don't know enough about ice walking to know if it's safe. If it, it's, it's probably safe, but the fact that you can hear it crack underneath your feet just makes me fucking, oh, it's so cold. There is one more thing you need to do when you find a frozen lake like this. Where am I gonna put my camera where it's not gonna fall into the fucking lake? I think we're gonna leave, but there's one thing you gotta do before you do. Okay, I'm not even walking on it and I could hear the ice crack. Like it's, it's, water is moving down there. I think the fact that we could see the river running earlier is a sign that walking on that is a bad fucking idea. <sighs> Let's go. So fucking cool. Holy shit. Oh my god, that's so cool. No, if I fell in, I think I would be okay. I remember you gotta calm down, you gotta slowly put your arms over the ice and then just like heave yourself out, roll. I think hypothermia would be the problem. Just making sure that I don't fucking freeze to death. God, I it is hard to describe the way that it feels when the ice cracks. It's like it's like thunder. It's not like especially loud, but you can feel it in your bones. We've got about a half tank of gas left. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be before we get to another gas station. Apparently this lodge sells gas, so we will figure out where their pumps are. Oh, hey, I see pumps. Oh, and they've got three, oh my God, it's so expensive. If we want to get the premium gasoline, it is 50%, okay, yeah, so the, the cheap gas is the same as the it was on the mountain in yesterday's video. This one is 50% more expensive. Woof, I'm trying to find my wallet. Ah, uh, here we are. Got a little bit worried there for a second. It is cool that they have the options for the different octanes. Obviously, I'm going with the cheap one because that's outrageously expensive, but it is cool that you have the option. We just spent 50 bucks and we didn't even fill up the tank. Here in Canada, they're weird. They don't let you just like, oh my God, touching that is so fucking cold. They don't let you just like fill it up and then charge you afterward. You have to pre-select the amount that you want to pump. I pumped 50 thinking we'd fill up the tank. We didn't. It's okay. God, I gotta walk on a fucking lake today. Every fucking time, it does not want to start when I pump gas. We have 1,500 kilometers left before we're there. If you're not in America, that probably means something to you. Oh, it's called Muncho Lake. God, I just know that people are gonna watch those clips of me being excited to walk on the ice and be like, yep, he's gay. I'm not gay. I'm just really animated when I get excited. Oh, I found some buffaloes. Buffalo. I think they're looking for grass. Hi, buffaloes. No, it's funny. Most of the time that I spent growing up, I thought that Buffalo Wild Wings sold buffalo meat. Like I thought that was like one of the only places you could go to get buffalo. It looks like we're out of the cool part of the mountains, at least for now. We still have no cell data, so that's disappointing. So we are still completely out of cell signal but there's another one of those little shop places here. I'm curious if they have Wi-Fi. Maybe they have like satellite internet, maybe? I'm not sure where to park. Oh, hi puppy. 
Oh, you're so cute. You're also fluffy. Yes. I think it said they have food here. Oh, it is a restaurant. They do not have internet, so we are not going to eat here. We will pet the dog, though. Yes, so, so cute. Yes. They do not have internet. Bye, pup. I just want to make sure that the Surfshark people actually paid me. I haven't been able to get internet, so I haven't been able to see if they responded. I just want to take a second to appreciate how good the condition of the roads are. This is out in the middle of nowhere. There's snow and ice and all kinds of stuff going on here. But all of these roads are in fantastic condition. If this was America, there would be potholes all through these roads. Not even the asphalt, the roads are all plowed. Like, this is just great. I really appreciate this. We have just left British Columbia and now we are entering the Yukon, which is another one of their provinces. They do have a rest area here we can hop into. And I think we're gonna do that and we're gonna cook some food. See, I am pretty sure that all of the fucking I'm pretty sure that all of this stuff is still frozen solid. Yep. And I don't want to use any electricity to thaw it. I do have an idea though. We're just gonna light the whole thing on fire. Come back here. Wow. It's you. Ladies and gentlemen, the solution to our frozen soup problem. Fire in a bottle. <sighs> Having some rice flashbacks. Now, I honestly don't know if this is toxic to breathe. If I need to like have a window open or something genuinely don't know i know that the gas itself is probably toxic but i don't know what happens to it after it's burned so if i just burn everything it might be safe to breathe i'm going to crack the can of soup so that pressure doesn't build up and then we're just going to stick the whole thing on the fire and then we're going to try not to rock it let's go ahead and roll the windows down it's cold but i think it's probably worth it i am glad i decided to keep this with me i wasn't sure if it was worthwhile because i've got the stove and i've got the skillet and all that stuff but i'm glad i kept this this is Definitely coming in handy. Yeah, you can see it's still frozen solid. Um, I'm not sure if I should be worried that the bottom of it is going to heat up before the top part. It's not going to like convect all of that heat properly. And so I'll get like boiling soup on the bottom and ice on the top. I don't know. Oh wait, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Luckily, it doesn't seem to be completely frozen. So I can still like put my knife through the taste. I'm going to try to stir it. You know what? Maybe I was wrong for dismissing propane as soon as I got the battery because this is cooking way faster than my skillet would. This is, this is putting heat into the can. I've only had this on the burner for like four minutes and it's already at a point where I can stir it. The last one, it was thawed. It was like basically room temperature and it took 30 minutes on my little, my little rice cooker thing to cook. This thing is going way faster. It's like got a heartbeat. This is one thing I didn't get when I was on my bike. Hot food. This is still cold, but I didn't get hot food when I was on my bike. Although in the summer, hot food isn't worth nearly as much as hot food is worth out here. So, oh, look at that. Apparently we are at the 60th parallel right now. I see steam coming off. I think we're done. Let me get my tablet. I still have a tournament to watch. I only got to watch a small part of it yesterday. And again, more click walls there. Cheap nights could possibly snowball against Alexios if Alexios isn't careful. So this is chili macaroni and cheese. So fucking good. Oh shit, the can is hot. I gotta hold the top of it with my knees, not the bottom. The chokehold player. That's, it's just for me, it, it, all three games. It's yeah, the bottom of the can definitely has a layer of burnt uh, macaroni on the bottom, but that's fine. I don't need to keep the can. This is now an official recommendation if you're gonna be living in your car somewhere where it's really cold. This heats up cans of soup really well. I still wouldn't use this for something like rice or pancakes or any of the other types of food, but if you have cans of food, this is good for it. It's not cost effective compared to a battery like this because I think this costs maybe $8.99 or something like that and energy is basically free, but it is much more dense. You can cook 10, 20, 30 meals with this. You can cook maybe four or five with that. They both have pros and cons. I'm glad I have both. One thing I want to do before we hit the road again. 
I don't have a lot of winter clothes. I've got lots of t-shirts, but I think I have a, yes, I do have a sweater over here. It is kind of dirty. Uh, damn it, fuck. Okay, I've got t-shirts. T-shirt it is. I haven't had access to a washing machine since a minute. Oh, it's so fucking cold. I'm gonna keep this back here. I might use that as a second layer tonight. Okay. <clears throat> we have 15 hours to go before we get there. Oh, that's a whole bunch of deer. They were just walking right through the road. Good thing I was paying attention. It is not safe to drive here at night. Apparently we're passing through something called Watson Lake right now. We might want to see if we should get gas or something. That seems like a good idea. We've got half a tank. Did I just hear this crack? Damn it, I think my thing is rubbing on the side of this again. I'll deal with that later. How do I? I don't see the little card reader. Oh, here we go. Touch screen to begin. Touch screen, I'm touching the screen. Motherfucker. Select pump four. Regular, yes. Uh, debit credit card, yes. It doesn't actually tell me how much the gas costs, so we're just gonna pay whatever they're asking for, I guess. Oh, fucking God. Oh my God, touching the inside handle of this is so cold. Like the plastic is helpful. Oh, wait, I probably, oh, hey, the gas here is pretty cheap, com like as far as mountains go. 50% cheaper than the last place we were at. Oh my God, it's so fucking cold. Oh, hey, I have reception here. I can go check my email. Good, good, we're good. Okay, looking on my map, there is a McDonald's. Oh, five hours away from us. Okay, let's see if there is like a, see, I need some place so that once I wake up tomorrow, I can upload the video. Um, I guess if I do like three hours today, I could do three hours tomorrow. Let's see if there's a, a Tim Horton somewhere closer. Nope, we are in the middle of the mountains. If we want to get toward some place that has Wi-Fi, we need to go five hours away. Which means if we tried to make it there tonight, we would get there just before midnight. We'll have to cut this into two things, one today and then one tomorrow. Five hour drive, we can do it. No, it's 7 p.m. and the sun is still up. How cool is that? We get so much more drive time because of it. It's 8 p.m. and it's still bright outside. Bright is probably a strong word, but it's 8 p.m. and we can still see. That is the only good thing about being this far north. Okay, I'm gonna do something dangerous. I think I'm gonna turn my lights off just so that, to see if you guys can see what I'm seeing. I don't know how to turn my lights off. Huh. I guess I've never tried to turn my lights off at night. Wait, uh, brights, nope. I don't know how to fucking turn my headlights off. I guess that's a good thing. Yeah, I have no fucking clue, okay. Well, you guys just get this view of black and yellow. It's kind of funny, I feel like I'm living in the 1980s because I don't have cell data, I can't use the internet, I can't use my maps. So all of the distances, all of the rest stops, I'm just using the signs that drive by to figure out like, how close they are and whether or not I can go to the next one. Like I'll look at the signs and see the picture for the gas stations or the stores or all of that stuff. And Another thing that's interesting about Canada is do you know how you've got like services such as gas or restrooms or motel lodging? One of the services that they offer here is a trash can. Like you'll actually see that on the sign is a picture of a trash can. And I think that they do that to try to encourage people to not litter. Because if you're just driving and you don't know when the tra next trash can's coming, it can be kind of tempting to just throw it out your window. But if you know that in two kilometers there's a trash can, you're a lot less likely to litter. I think that's a good idea. It's probably much cheaper to send somebody out here once a month to empty the trash cans than it is to actually try to clean up litter on the side of the road in these conditions. Okay, I think that we are going to pull off into this rest area right here next to this trucker guy. Okay, now I need to mentally prepare myself to do something super not fun. As I'm sure you guys can see, it is very cold outside right now. I cannot afford to risk it anymore. If I keep fucking around, I will find out. The weather is so cold right now that every time we start the car in the morning, 
there is a 100 to 1,000 percent greater chance that we spin a bearing and destroy the engine. I showed what these look like last night. Let me get the extension cable out of here. I have two of them. I think that we only need to install one on the main oil. I got the second one for the transmission, but the transmission is not as uh, fragile. We need to go underneath the car and we need to stick this to the bottom of the oil pan. Then we need to take this cable and we need to run it through the firewall grommet up inside the cabin of the car so we can plug it into the battery. This is going to keep the oil warm enough so that tomorrow when we try to start the car, there is a slightly less chance that we blow up the engine. Before we go under there and install this, I'm gonna test it to make sure that it actually works and gets hot. Plug it in. Holy shit, it's vibrating. Oh God, it gets very hot. That's good, that's good, oh God. One additional thing that we need to do first is we need to chop this off because this is too big to actually fit through the grommet. I can probably only fit the wire through, so we're gonna chop this off, feed the wire through, and then reattach the wires. Hey, good, they're thawing out. The beans are still frozen, but the soups are doing good. I think we're also gonna wanna thaw these off because the bottom of the oil pan is probably dirty and stuff from all of the road. We wanna wipe it down first. That way we can actually get a good contact with the pad. So for that job, I'm just gonna use my handy dandy heater. There we go, like that. Now let's chop this cable up. Good thing I have two of these. So if I fuck one of them up, the other one should still work. Wire cutters. Here's the strategy. We're gonna take this cable, we're gonna feed it through on this side till it's dangling down on the outside of the car. Then we're gonna take this wire, we're gonna tie them together and then we're gonna pull it back through. That way the cable should be pulled through the grommet with the cable. This way we're not trying to hunt around there, trying to find out where entrances and openings are. We can just snake it through. I wanna do as much as possible of this from the inside without opening the doors. The first step, pulling the battery up onto the passenger seat which is tough because she's fucking heavy. Then we'll put the battery in the driver's seat. First thing we gotta do is we gotta pull the carpet up. Hard to get down here without opening the door and working from the outside, but I will figure it out because it's fucking cold outside. Let's pull this guy down. Some of you might remember this as the firewall grommet. We accessed this before when we ran this cable through to charge the battery in the back. We're gonna pop this open again get these heaters in there. In case you guys are wondering what I look like from the back, it looks like that. Now we're gonna send our fisher cable down through the hole and then hopefully we'll find it poking out underneath the car. The next part's gonna be quick because the next part is gonna be cold. We need to find the wire dangling down, okay. You see it? Take the wire and we'll tie them together. Okay, and let's pull the cable back through. We got it in. Give me a sec to warm up. We got the cable on this side. Let's get the oil nice and hot again. I can tell just from looking at my hands that yes, the underside of that is going to be very oily. We need these to thaw out. Now that we've got the wire on the inside, we need to connect it back to its uh, plug half. This definitely would not have fit through there. Now, when you're dealing with alternating current like we are, there is no red and black wire. It doesn't matter which one connects to which one. There we go, it is one cable again. I'm going to plug it in again, both to test the cable and just to heat it up because it's been outside for a while and we want both things to be warm so that the glue will stick. Yep, it is pumping heat through it. Okay, this stage is going to be very fast too. We're gonna go wipe down the oil pan. Can I reach the oil pan? I can reach it. I can reach it, good. Wiping it down, wiping it down. Yeah, it was dirty. Okay, back in the car. Oh, fuck, it's so cold outside. Okay, I'm gonna unplug this. That way we can pull the cable slack, pull the glue off, and then just stick it on. Okay. 
Okay. It is definitely warm right now. Good. Good. Got to peel the glue off. Come on. Okay. Now, let's stick it to the oil pan. Make sure it doesn't touch fucking anything. No, it's not sticking. Please stick. Please stick. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's so cold. Getting inside. Let me use the second one I got as a test. This should be sticky. Oh, it's not very sticky. Damn it. I'm going to plug it in again, heat it up, get it as hot as possible, and then hopefully once the glue is hot, it'll stick. I'm curious if I have any super glue in my little toolbox. Obviously, super glue is not like thermally whatever, but I just need this to stick there for long enough for the stuff to melt. Look at that. Okay, I do not know how long this will last. I don't know how long any of this will last. I need it to last like three weeks while I'm in Alaska and then this whole thing can fall apart. Um, it's possible that I'll stick it to it and then 10 minutes later it'll fall off and it'll just be dangling behind the car while we drive. I honestly don't know. Okay, let's go super glue this shit. I'm literally fucking super gluing shit to the underside of my engine. Yay. Get the light down here. Be fast, because it's cold. Cold. Come on, I know you're cold. You can do it. Come out. It does not want to come out of the bottle. So fucking cold. Okay, now for the important part. Oh my god, it's sticking. It's sticking. Holy shit. Yes. Fuck yeah. Okay, the whole thing has good contact. Get inside the fucking car. Thank you, super glue. Let's plug it in, heat it up. Fucking, come on. Super glue. Be very careful with this, otherwise you will make a big, big problem. Super glue is a double-edged sword. Now, we're just gonna put everything back. Put the carpet back down. Then we'll just have this cable sticking out here that we can like tuck away if we want to, but plug it into the battery when we need it. Let's put the battery back in place. It's not a fucking one-handed job. Plug it in, and hopefully this will keep the engine warm at night. Yep, okay, it's drawing power. Okay, so doing some basic math, this takes 154 watts, which means this has 2,000 watt hours. This can run this for 10, maybe 15 hours. I have maybe 15 hours of engine heat from this full battery. Give or take, I've got about one night's worth of heat from this battery. I can only do this one night at a time, then I've got to recharge the full thing. The back seat of my car is a fucking mess now, though. <sighs> one thing at a time, one thing at a time, okay. What we just accomplished absolutely sucked balls, but it was unimaginably important. Okay, I plugged this battery in, so this battery in the back is charging this battery. I want this battery to be at full every night so that we have the entire day. This battery is more important than this battery. That battery has enough heat to keep the blanket and the things running for days and days and days. This only has enough power to keep that thing running for one night. So it is more important that this stay charged than that stay fully charged. The last thing we need to do is we need to test the system. This is all well and good, but if that thing falls off, it doesn't do us any good. So we're gonna go drive for an hour or two and then come back and make sure it's still attached to the bottom of the oil pan. If this actually works, we just increased the lifespan of this engine by a whole long time. We were looking at days beforehand. Check it out, there's a semi truck in front of us, which is actually great at night because it means that if an animal runs out in front of the road, they'll be the ones that hit it and not me. So we're just gonna tail them for a while. It looks like they are pulling into the rest stop, so we should do that too. Looks 
like there's a couple people here already. Okay, this is where we're gonna sleep for the night, I guess. Let's go make sure that our uh, heating pad is still there. Oh. Oh, it's so cold on the ground. Our heating pad is still there. Fuck yeah. I'm not sure how warm it will keep the oil, but it will definitely be warmer than having nothing. So. Now, this should run for 10, maybe 11 hours. Turn my heated blanket on. Okay, good. Turn the heated seats on. Okay. Tonight is gonna be exceptionally cold. I don't have a weather app. I don't know what the actual temperature is going to be, but I can feel it. It is going to be very cold. Right now, it is much colder than it typically is in the cabin of my car. I might get the black blanket out of my trunk too, just to put an extra layer on top of me. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Hopefully the engine starts. Wait, nope. I just realized I was not thinking about my oil pan drain bolt when I put that thing on. So it's entirely possible that I put that over where my oil is supposed to drain from. This could make my next oil change fun. Good night.